Hallelujah. Can I take this opportunity to greet you again in Jesus' name? I pray that I would be able to be very short, precise, so that we can be able to finish in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, this is your day. The glory of the Lord must be revealed in you. Can you tell the next person again, this is your day. The glory of the Lord must be revealed in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, without wasting any time, let us go to the book of Exodus. The heading of what I want to speak about is allow the glory of the Lord to be revealed in you. Allow the glory of the Lord to be revealed in you. Ariamolawa Exodus. Okay, you are 19. Can we read? It says, And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud Thank you. And the pillar of cloud went before them and stood sorry, went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and a darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. 22. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground. And the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. 24. Now it came to pass in the morning, in the morning watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud. And he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Can I repeat this verse? Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud. And he troubled the army of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot's wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fight for them against the Egyptians. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Your grace, your love, your peace. Let it fill us today as we find the revelation to this word. And guide us to walk and be guided by it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. I have already spoken that I want to speak under the heading, allow the glory of God to be in you. 
Can you tell the person that is close? Allow the glory of God to be in you. Well, where we have read, I believe the story that we are hearing, we have heard it many and many and many a times. But today I want us to look at it from a different angle. We are hearing a story of the Egyptians running behind the Israel, the children of Israel. Why? Because these children were their servants from many, many, many years. And now they went away. Why? Because they said, we want to go and worship our God. And for Pharaoh and his people to release them, it was very difficult. They were supposed to see signs and wonders before they released them to go to where they wanted. Now, where we are reading here, we are reading in a place where they reached the Red Sea. And if you can start from the beginning of the chapter, you will understand when, when, when God says, I want Egypt to know that I am God. So I will make Egypt to come behind you. To follow you. Not because Egyptians want. But because God wants. Hallelujah. So as I have said these words, I want to say unto you. What is happening in your life? It is not because the enemy wants. It is because God wants. The rejection. The failures. You know, people running away from you. We don't even understand you. And when you are alone, you ask yourself, but Mara, why me? God wanted it to happen like that. Now, the Bible says, when the Egyptians were following the Israelites, they reached to a sea. When they reached to a sea, God said to Moses, I will make them understand that you are lost and you are going around in the desert. Let me tell you, the devil thinks by you moving around one place, you are lost. You are not lost. It is God's plan. Now, when they were moving around in the desert, they stayed there. And it was time to cross over. Now God says to Moses, tell the people to stand up and start moving. Because today, they are going to cross the Red Sea. Even though God is allowing them to cross and leave the enemy behind. No, no. God wanted them to cross but the enemy also must get into the freeway that God has created so that God can punish them. So now as they were going, there is something peculiar, something good that I want you to look at. The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. The Bible says, when they entered, when they started moving, going to where God wanted them to move, God caused an east wind to blow in the sea. And the wind blew in the sea. And as it blew in the sea, it opened a way, not for just anyone, for the Israelites. But remember in the background, God said, I want them to follow you. And now they started following. As, as anybody, everyone is seeing a road you want to enter. You want to go where others are going, isn't it? Can't you, that road was not meant for them. The road was meant for the Israelites. And now God allowed them to walk into the road. And they walked. Now the thing that I want to speak about is. The pillar or the cloud that was in front. It went to the back. 
It was opening the way they could see where they were going. Now God took that pillar from the front. Go and place it where? At the back. Why? Because he wanted Israel and Egypt to be different. He wanted them to be separated. They must not be at the same place at the same time. So now when they were separated, Egyptians live on about saying, they started running because the road is opened. They can see we are following them. We are going to get them not so far. Not so long we will be with them. Because they had chariot chariots. They have a horseman. They were climbing on horses. And in Ahana, Israelites were walking on foot. It was very much easy for them to get them. But the thing that is amazing is the pillar of cloud. That went to the back. Now, after when they've entered, this is how I, how I love God. The Bible says, God caused confusion. Tell the person that is close to you, there is confusion in the camp of the enemy. Now, where there is a pillar, remember, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire represent God. God who was walking with them. Now the Bible says God caused confusion in the camp of the Egyptians. When they were following, they started driving their horses or the whatever they were driving by, by power. It was very much difficult for them to drive them. Why it started to become difficult? That's where they started realizing, I love God. They started knowing and recognizing and remembering. This is the God that punished us before we took this journey to follow them. Because God has punished them before. Now they are following, not because they don't know, they know. But they wanted to follow them. Now God started to confuse them. When God confused them, they drove their cars with a problem. It was difficult, difficult for them to be able to drive, for them to be able to ride, for them to be able to run. By the time they started realizing or thinking or remembering to say, see what? God is fighting for his people. Let us run. It was too late. When they start thinking about running, it was too so late. They didn't know that whatever they are doing, it is the plan of the Almighty God. God wanted to destroy them. Now tell the person that is close to you, this enemy that is following you each and every day, God allowed this enemy to follow you, but today is over. Today it's over. Today it's over. Now as they were following, the driving was heavy. Confusion started. The Israelites has passed over already. They are already on the other side. And now this pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire is between Egypt and between Israel. The other nation cannot see the other nation. The Bible now said again, God caused. Mudimu. Caused. Another wind to blow. And when this wind blew, it was over with the Egyptians. Because the water came back to where it was. Those walls of the water were broken. And it engulfed and it flowed off, taken off all the Egyptians, their cars, their chariots and everything they were having. And I love the Bible because it says, when morning comes, can somebody say morning? When morning comes, when in the shores of the sea. 
Because God fought for them. Now the Bible says, before the Lord caused the wind to blow to finish the Egyptians, he said he looked. The verse that I have repeated when I was reading. He looked at the Egyptians through the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. It means God was somewhere around the Israelites. When they were moving from Egypt, he was there. When they were hungry, crying, he was there. The Bible says always there will be a cloud that will be moving with them. Now when they were moving, after the death of the Egyptians, after themselves they have crossed over, after they found redemption and deliverance from the Egyptians, because now there is a sea in between. They can no longer go back again. They washed in the morning and they saw, you know, they saw Bodhisattva Chama Echipita Barrovechi Mutabe Kante Haliwatle. Why? Because God, their God, fought for them. Now let us speak about this cloud. I want us to focus in this cloud. The cloud that God can look through and see your enemy. The cloud that when it is present, God can see through to what your enemy is thinking. Then the Bible says, after they have crossed over, they went that aside and Moses caused them, called them all together to come and worship and bless the name of the Lord and thank the Lord for everything that the Lord has done for them. I don't want to go on with that story. But the issue that amazes is, after a few days, they started crying again. For what? Food. In other words, the cloud is there. But they were not realizing that God was always there with them. Because this cloud that we are talking about represents the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody ask the person that is close to him or her, do you have this cloud we are talking about? Now, after they go, they've gone to the other side. Egyptians are dead. Thank God Almighty. Confusion was there. Thank God Almighty. God has killed them for us. Thank God Almighty. But the issue here is, Bazalwan, do we have this cloud inside of us? I will just explain just a little bit. I won't speak long so that you may understand. This cloud, the very cloud that the Israelites were walking with, it was always before them or behind, or before or behind, before or behind, always. It was the presence of the Lord in their lives. God was guarding them. God was walking with them. God even knew about what the Egyptians wanted to do. God was knowing where they were going to and why. Because he has promised their forefathers that they will be going to the promised land. So can I tell somebody that is here, you are bound to reach the promised land. Because God has destined you to reach the promised land. Now after the death of these people, Moses was given a command that he has to do. Listen to me carefully so that you don't become lost. Moshe, Mudimu, Uila Mufa Taelo, Taelo Ashi, Moshe, Nkarele built for me a tabernacle. God wanted to stay somewhere close to these people. They are so naughty. After they have seen this great big wonder, still they go and mama and turn back from the Lord. So Moses, can you please build me a tabernacle? And in this tabernacle, I want you to do one, two, three. 
you must put an ark of the covenant. That's where I'm going to come and dwell. Can you tell the person that is close to you, ark of the covenant? Now, the same cloud that the children of Israel were moving with from Egypt up until where they were going came and sat in the holy of holies. So they say. How they call it. And if you can read the Bible as you go on with it, there were people that were ordained to work in that place. Nobody can just go. Only people who are nominated as priests, as whatever. They are the people who can enter the Holy of Holies. Now, why, what I want to explain to you today is the same, same pillar of a cloud that was moving in front of the Israelite is the same cloud that is in you today. If you have the presence of the Lord in your life, you have the same cloud in you. If you don't have the presence of the Lord in your life, the cloud is not there. The cloud that they were moving with represents the glory of the Lord. The Bible says as things were going and time was going, Jesus Christ came to earth and died for me, you. I'm just trying to shorten this long story to be small, but you'll understand me. Jesus Christ came to Mother Earth to come and die for me and you. And the Bible says, as I read, the veil that covered the Holy of Holies was torn that day when Jesus died. In other words, it means there is no more separation between Holy of Holies and where we are. If you want to enter the presence of the Lord, it is done. You can enter the presence of the Lord. If you want to speak with the Lord, it is done. You can speak with the Lord yourself. If you want to worship, give sacrifices to the Lord, it is done. You can do it yourself. Now the Bible says the veil was to us torn. There was no veil anymore. There was no veil anymore. There was no veil anymore. When Jesus was crucified, it means me and you, we can enter the Holy of Holies. Me and you, we can allow the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord to be in our life. Let us look at a certain story. Even if it happens before Jesus died. The story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The Bible says a law was given in the country they were living in. It's in Daniel chapter 3. In the country they were living in, a law was given. People are not supposed to. People are supposed to bow. And these three said, no, we cannot. No, we can't. To an extent where the king called them, tried to bribe them. How many bribes did you get to buy off your salvation? Many of our salvations have been bought already because of the things that we want. Hallelujah. Now the king called them and said to them, you'll go and read them, it's, it's in uh, Daniel chapter 3. You, you are one of my best men. Everything you do for me is good. But now I have a problem with you. The only thing that I want you to do, Malikodi, I just want you to bow. Finish, clap. I don't want you to leave your God. I don't want you to stop worshiping your God. I don't want you to stop praying. But the only thing I want is, one, is you to put your knee down. And worship the image that I've made. And these three guys said, no king. We cannot do that. Why? Because they know that each and every day when they are pre praying, they are preserving this cloud that they are living with. Hallelujah. 
And now as they denied, the king said to them, well, fine. Because you are denying, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell the people that are monitoring the fire to increase it so that it burns more. And they answered the king and said, oh, king, we love our God. Even if this God does not save us, well, good. Or even if he said as he saved us, well, good. But the mere fact of saying, we cannot bow if you are saying we must bow. We cannot bow. And then the Bible says the fire was increased. And as the fire was increased then, after denying to bow to the golden image, they were put inside the fire. Guess what happened? I want you to look at this picture. When they have entered into the fire, himself, he, the king, stood up. You want to see if indeed, indeed, indeed they are burned there. They are ashes. Now he went there to overlook, just to want to see by a hole to the furnace. And then when he watched, he got a surprise of his life. The glory of the Lord appeared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord appeared in the burning furnace. This is the amazing thing. When they took out the guys, the glory was not there. But if they put them inside the fire, the glory is there. Now there is something we are missing as children of God. We need the glory of the Lord inside us. Hallelujah. Why do I say inside us? Because now Jesus has died. We have been given authority. We can live according to the word of God. We can do things according to the word of God. We can live salvation on earth. We can be true Christians on earth. We can live according to the commandments of the Father. Why? Because the glory is inside. If me and you today, we can decide and say, I want to be a Christian who is filled by the glory of God. I am telling you the enemy that is following you, he or she is wasting his time. Remember, the presence of the Lord is with you. Wherever you go, you go with the presence of the Lord. Whatever you do, you do it with the presence of the Lord. Now, who can defeat you? Now, when they took these guys out of the furnace, the Bible says, even the smelling of bent hairs was not there. Smelling of clothes being bad, not there. Why? There was somebody with them inside the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you ch something, ch child of God. In that situation that you are in today, there is somebody with you. Somebody is working with you. The problem is we don't recognize, we don't realize, we don't see him, we don't speak with him, we don't do things, with, we don't tell him even before we start doing. We just do ourselves according to our own understanding. But if we can commit ourselves like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these guys were given an opportunity, let me say, to sin anyway. They were given an opportunity to sin if they want, but they denied. Why? Because they know they serve a living God. Now, there are so, so many opportunities that are coming into our lives today. And many of us, we fall into the opportunities. Why? Because we don't realize and recognize the presence of the Lord in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, I want the glory of the Lord to be in me. I want the glory of the Lord to be in me. How does this glory of the Lord come into your life? When you repent, change your life and accept Jesus as Lord and King and Savior of your life. And you accept the power of the Holy Spirit. That's when this glory starts to live in you. That's when this glory starts to work in your life. That's 
That's when negative things start to be positive. That's where de denial started to be agreement. That's where when things start don't work, they start working. That's where those that rejected you start loving you. It is because you have the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to challenge you today. What is it that you are coming across that makes you to go away from the love of the Lord? If you can sit down and just think yourself and ask yourself, it is because I am not recognizing the blessing, the glory of the Lord in my life. Moshe, allow me to speak in pity. Moshe, asipila. Ushile Joshua. Joshua or Moshe, Moshe. Yes, what about you? Mudi mudi khetej. Ata thalu sari wena Joshua. Jwale ka ge ne ke sipela le moshe ke to sipela le wena. Are you hearing me? As I was with my servant Moses, I will be with you. And everywhere you step your foot on, the place is yours. Hallelujah. That was a new agreement with Joshua. It was not an agreement that was done with Moses, but with Joshua. Now what is it that is hindering us to be what God wants us to be? We need the glory of the Lord inside us. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we need the glory of the Lord. We need the glory of the Lord. We need the pillar of fire in us. We need to be directed by the Father himself. We need to be directed by the Holy Spirit himself. That is where we will be able to make it in our Christian life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, today, I want to pray with you. I want to speak with you, children of God. We are tired of failing each and every day. We are tired of mishaps. Each and every day. Our problem is we don't realize. Hmm? A little thing. Realize. If you can stand right now and say, I am a woman of God. Born and bred by the blood. I am a citizen of heaven. I'm filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. I move with the heaven. When I move, heaven moves. When I stop, heaven stops. When I speak, heaven is speaking. You will start to realize and recognize that you start to feel the presence of the Lord close to you. Hallelujah. Now, what is it that is making this glory not to be visible in us. Our lifestyle. I've already given an example with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Lifestyle destroys everything. Because God said, he himself, I am a jealous God. That is why instead of growing, we go back. Because all the time we fall off the glory of the Lord. We are not growing in the glory of the Lord. When we grow in the glory of the Lord, it's where we do things according. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God was supposed to come. He was supposed to come. These guys stood on the truth. Look at Daniel himself. He stood on the truth. Look now at Paul and Silas. I want Silas, I want to finish. In the book of Acts chapter 16. The Bible says, Ma, they healed a certain girl. Healing, heal, heal. The parents were making money by Nana. Now when parents see that money maker gone, they went to the highest priest to say, Hey, you know these men. Hey, this man. They were just afraid to say, 
our daughter was sick. We were making money through her. Now the money making system is gone. And they were angry. And now these people took Paul and Silas into the jail. And the jailkeeper was given an order. You must look the, them inside. There in, 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 in. Inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going over. When we reach home, you will reach this. Read these uh, verses. I will give them back. I will give them to you so that you can read them when you reach home. The jailkeeper was told to lock them inside. Very far inside, inside there. So that they must never go out again. After being beaten and after being punished. Now the Bible says, I love this God. The Bible says, when they were inside jail, during midnight, Acts chapter 16, from 20, you will go down with it. The Bible says, Paul and Silas started praying. And singing praise unto the Father. What does it mean? Paul and Silas started a conversation with the Father. They prayed. Fella, when we pray, we are speaking with Father. Isn't it? Now they started a conversation. If Daddy was busy, he has to stop and listen to them. On top of them, they started singing praises. Sister Chenna was just saying, uh, God inhabits the praises of his children. 12 o'clock midnight. They started praying, Father, we have been beaten for nothing, for something we didn't do. We have been beaten because we are doing your will. We have been beaten, God, because we are following you. After praying, telling God the Father, what is it they are coming through? They started singing hymns, praises to the Lord. Father, even when I'm sick, you are still God. Father, even when I'm broken, you are still my Father. Father, even though my things are not right, you are still God. You are still seated on the throne. Even when everything is beyond your head, anyway, you are still the God that I know. Even when my things are not working, you are still God. Why this communication worked there for them so quickly? The glory of the Lord was with them. Can somebody say hallelujah? Can you tell the person that is close to you? You need the glory of the Lord to be inside you. When you have the glory of the Lord, you have the presence of the Lord with you. Wherever you go, you go with the Father. In whatever you do, you do it with the Father. You will never fail. If God was with, was with the people of Israel, he can never fail to be with you. As long as you are following the commandments, and what God has said. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now when, when Paul and Silas were singing praises. Hymns to the Lord. And these people were beaten. Don't forget. They were beaten for something they didn't do. They were trying to heal somebody from a sickness. Until they are making a problem, creating a problem for somebody. Now they were singing hymns. Now when they were worshipping, when they were singing, praising the Lord. The word of the Lord says, the jailers, other prisoners were listening and looking at them. Hallelujah. 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 Now this is something that I today want to challenge you with. Where you are working is the glory of the Lord there. Paul and Silas reached a place, a prison. Understand me when I'm saying this. 
when they reached a prison, jailed for, for an offense they never did, jailed for this thing they love doing, praying for other people. When they reached there, they remembered they have a covenant in there. They started praying, speaking with the Father. And as they were speaking with the Father, they started singing hymns unto the Father. And each and every person who was in prison was supposed, meant to listen to them. The Bible says so. All of them were listening, watching what these men were doing. And the Bible says, suddenly, say suddenly, an earthquake hit the jail. The jail was shaking. The foundation was shaking. Why? Because they were worshipping. They were in covenant with their father. Speaking to their father. Telling their father you are still God even when we are in jail. Telling their father you've been faithful to us. That's why we are faithful to you. And the Bible says the jailer, the man who was told to lock them up. When he sees that the jail doors has opened on, on their own. Nobody opened them. Nobody came with a key to open them. He wanted to kill himself. This is what I want you to look at. After speaking with them, they said to him, Mr. Man, don't harm yourself. Mr. Man, don't kill yourself. We are all here. Nobody ran away. There is something that is holding us. The glory of the Lord has changed a jail to a place of worship. The anointing of the Lord is now in this place. That is why you are seeing this place being a different place altogether. When the glory of the Lord is around, brethren, everything must change. Your situation must change. Your problems must go. Your enemies must go. When the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is within you, everything must be different about your life. If everyone is going south, you must go north. If everyone, if everyone is going down, you must go up. You don't go where others are going. Now this man said, the jailer, says, tell me, what is it that I can do? Hallelujah. What is it that I can do so that I can be saved? I have seen this glory by my own eyes. Hmm? Forgotten. Now he is asking, what is it I can do to be saved? Now I want to pose a question to you. I'm speaking about the glory of God. We need the glory of God in our lives. We cannot stumble and fall all the time when we meet situations. We cannot fall all the time. We are children of heaven. We are children of the most high God. We cannot fail each and every time. We cannot cry because of diseases each and every time. No, we have a father who is in heaven, who loves us so dearly and who cares for us so dearly. The problem is recognition. And you tell the person that is close to you, recognition. Just realize and recognize that there is somebody. There is something inside of me. That is living inside of me. That is why I am a different woman. That is why I am a different person. That is why the things that I do, some people don't understand. When you are in your workplace, they must start speaking about you. And say, Yo, you know what? We don't understand this girl. We don't understand this woman. When we go for lunch, she does not go for lunch. When we go for lunch, she start praying. And start speaking things we don't understand. When we are saying we are having a meeting, we cannot sit down and speak with her. Why? Because there is something different in you. Hallelujah. 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 Can you tell yourself today, I want the glory of the Lord to be in me. 
Speak it like you mean it. I want the glory of the Lord to be in me. I want the glory of the Lord to be in me. I want to live a different life. I want to be a different person. I don't want to do things the way they are doing their things. Why? Because I have the glory of the Lord in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now these men, after when the jail is shaked, doors open, chains fall. The jailer asking, what is it I can do? It was because of the glory that descend, descended to where they were. And the glory of the Lord started working in their lives. Now today I pray for you, children of God. I want the glory of the Lord to be inside you. I want you to start troubling those that are troubling you. If there is somebody troubling you today, he or she must know that the glory of the Lord is going to descend into your life and your life will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is, ah, my life is changing. My life is changing today. I am filled with the glory of the Lord. I am filled with the presence of the Lord. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am filled with power. I am filled with anointing. I am filled. 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 I am filled in the name of Jesus. That is why you see us. We are children of God. But we don't have a secret. The glory in me. Hallelujah. Look at this man. Silas Limchotiai. Aba betilu. Aba tswane le nna le lena. They are not like me and you. Ma me. La talandrua hotse. When I go to pray today in the evening, Father, that woman, one, two, three, that woman, God, if I am serving you, you must show her that I am serving you. This is the kind of prayers we have to offer. If we can look at this one, so you will hear, they never, never spoke about those who jailed them, even though they didn't do anything. They believed in the one they were serving because they knew that the glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord is within them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the person that is close to you, you need the glory of the Lord. You need the glory of the Lord today. Your life must change today. Your life must have a new meaning today because the glory of the Lord will come down and will fill you and you will then become what God wants you to become. Hallelujah.